What's going on guys? Brandon here with TMG Pits, Knoxville, Tennessee. Today I got the volunteer fired up behind me and we're going to do a biscuit test again. I'm sure some of you guys recently saw the Mad Scientist review of our pit versus a few others and the biscuit test. Well, we don't think that actually gave a true review of how our smoker really operates. So what we're going to do today to inform you guys, because we've been asked many times now, hey, can you show us how we're supposed to run it or how you would recommend running it? And guys, you are the pit master. So you run it to make the best barbecue possible the way you want to. But we're going to show you how we do it. Um, obviously, we have done a biscuit test before. We got different results from the mad scientist. So um, we're going to see if we can replic replicate the results we had before and see what comes out. And by the way, at the end of this video, we will address what we think possibly happened um, in that review and we'll go from there but for now let's get it started we're going to be do, run this pit between 225 and 250 because i know a lot of our customers like to go low and slow um, so we're going to just run it in there obviously when we open the door originally it's going to be at 250 it may drop down to that 225 for a few minutes we'll get it back up to it right in that area let it run um, probably 18 minutes 20 minutes obviously you know, if we're cooking these at 350, it's going to be a little bit quicker. Uh, no different in barbecue. You know, if you, if you cook a higher temperature, it's going to get done quicker. So um, what we're going to do, like I said, two, two tests today. One's going to be at 225 to 250. One's going to probably be around from 250 to 275, which we really believe that's majority of the barbecue range that you guys are going to cook at. Um, so we want to show you what the pit will do, how it'll react, how we're going to build the fire. We'll also go over how we started the fire and a mistake that I made right off the bat. So let's get it. Okay guys, so we're fixing to open the door. We, so for the first task, like I said, we're gonna try to low and slow crowd. Um, so what we do is we, we have this one sitting at 250 right now. This one's sitting at two, probably 250, 248, somewhere in there. You guys can see that. Um, when we open the door, obviously the temperature will drop and then it'll slowly climb back up. We're gonna go for what we probably think 18 minutes maybe. 18 minutes open the door up we'll see where they're at if they need to go longer we'll close it back down obviously when we you know it'll probably slowly rise back up to that 250 mark um and then you know if we close it back down at 225 you know that's just part of the test the next run we do will be a little bit hotter hotter but while we have it here it's been sitting here for a few minutes um let's roll with it okay so guys uh we got them on here we did one two three four five six rows of four one two three four five five rows of two on top we actually put two on the water, our water pan tray that we have uh, built in our smoker. So you can see There's TMG no water pits. pan in there. There's no water pan in there. We're not trying to trick anybody here, um, but we did put them there because we didn't do that before. So did it this time, so let's see how it goes. So we've been here for actually, I think 23 minutes. We're shooting this live also for YouTube. So we got a little, uh, can you get it on there? Yep. Got it a little uh, carried away, but we've probably averaged 230 on this cook right here. So we haven't opened it up yet. This will be the first time we see it too. Um, but because we went 230 and it, it really never really reached 250 um i think we probably okay so let's open it up and so there is your first look So as you can see, it's a little bit hotter on, on the, and so I don't know if we showed this earlier, I can't remember, but, um, and it's crazy cause they're not, yeah. not done as much. I, that, that's interesting. We, we've never put them on the actual, um, uh, wa right here. Oh, like okay. The water pan. Um, but, uh, you know, realistically left, to, I mean the, the top looks close and, and we'll pull them off. Did we get a spatula? We did. Um, these right here got a little hotter. But I mean, these barely, the rest of them are almost dead on. And Which we'll lay all these out on the table. Yeah. And this is cooking across the whole grate here. So uh, how many biscuits did we do? Remember, 36? 36. I think it's 36 up here. Of 36 right now, I mean, none of them are burnt. There's two that are more done than the rest. We may call those crispy. Crispy. I mean, Jerby would say these are all golden brown. This is 100%. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie, that I, I kind of agree with him on this. So, 
Uh, should we pull them off? Let's go ahead and pull them off. And okay. Them on the table. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull them off. I'm gonna, once we get them off, just so you guys know, I'm going to close this back down and then start working the fire back up and get it back up to like 250, 275. And that way it will be prepared for the next run of biscuits. So let's do it. Okay guys, so we're waiting for the pit to come back up to temperature now to put in the next run. We're going to try to maintain that 250 to 275 mark on it. So we'll shoot for 260. Um, but while we're waiting for it to come up, let's shoot the video real quick on this. So this is how they come out. This is your top grate, okay? This is your bottom grate. Um, the way they come out is, is there is a water pan tray in there. There's not a water pan. There's no water in that smoker right now, okay? But there from day one there's always been a water pan tray to put a water pan if you want it it's outside of the cooking grate so we're not taking up room obviously you can put a water pan on the cooking grate that's up to you as the pit master but so these two right here were on the water tray so the, so basically the way this laid out the firebox actually would be right here okay so smoke's coming in stack right here so as you can see the two right next to the fire, firebox did get a little bit more uh, done golden brown Okay, not too bad. Obviously, if you put a water pan right here, you would take these two out of the equation. Um, from there, left to right, if, you know, pretty even. I mean, that whole cooking grate's usable. Um, the whole way down. You know, at 225, nothing's getting burnt. Um, I, I don't see any reason why. The average temperature was. Oh, the average temperature was 230. Um, it, once we got it, shut the door within probably two or three minutes, it was at 230 and it just, it stuck 230. Um, so that's probably the average temperature. So this is for your low and slow guys. Okay. Don't think you're going to see anything that you have burnt. Um, you know, at, at that temperature, no matter where you're at in here, looks like the cooking grade is about a hundred percent usable. Um, like I said, if you use a water pan, obviously these were on the water pan tray. You could put a water pan on the, on the actual, um, great take those two out and then there's really no difference at all uh really impressed by the top grate here it, that's this is what we've seen in other people's reviews and it's all we've seen in our reviews is that really even cook um, i know a lot of guys say hey i don't like cooking on top grate can't cook on top grate but honestly is it a little hotter yes it is but i think most people say hey i can cook on all the bottom i mean it, it may get done a little bit sooner but um pretty usable I mean, it, you know, if you want to argue these two out, fine. I mean, you're you're still at a you know high 90s of, of percent of, of use, usability on the whole entire grate. So um, we're working the temperature back up right now. Like I said, we were at 225, 230 on these. We're gonna try to get up to that 260, 275 mark. Try to maintain that for these over here. Um, so once we get up temperature, we'll put these in. Okay, guys, now we're back. We got the we've been running the pit for a little bit. Trying to relearn it just a little bit, see what it's going to take to run at 275. Um, we got it at 275, 280. That's perfect. Um, you know, we want to run it. Like I said earlier, this test is more a little bit hotter. Um, I think for the most part, some guys may bump up to 300, but I think that 275 mark is where a lot of guys are going to run that down to 250. I think you're going to average there unless you just just love the low and slow, and that's up to you. You're the pit master. Um, but being that we're at that 280 mark, 275 mark, we're going to throw these on. We're gonna open it up, we're gonna lose some temperature, okay? So when we do that, we'll try to get in here as quick as possible. Um, get them in here, get the door shut back, work it back up as quick as possible. I think we said we're gonna go, what, 18 minutes? We'll try 18 minutes. 18, 16, 18 minutes on these. Um, see how they turn out, and then we can go from there. Let's do it. Okay, 275. By the time I opened the door, it was dead even both sides. Um, but got them in there just now. Two, same setup as this right here, okay? No tricks. Uh, let's close it down. Wait about 16 minutes, see what they look like. Okay, guys, now we're back. Um, it's been 17, 18 minutes. What is it, Hayes? 17 minutes, 20 seconds. 20 seconds. So we, ha we haven't opened the door yet. Um, for the most part, we ran between 250 and 275. I do think we probably have a really close average to 260, 265. Um, we maintain that for, for most of that cook. Um, so we haven't seen them yet. We haven't opened the door. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. Okay, yeah, right now we're sitting at about 260. Oh my gosh, they're burned. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So let's pull those out. Let me get like a right here. Give y'all a pretty good view of what they look like there. 
it guys, we're back with the biscuit test. Only thing we've done differently right here is we've moved the table away from the smoker. The sun is shining right back down into the camera. Um, unfortunately, our editing skills and our uh, camera uh, had a hard time picking up the color on our biscuit test. So we wanted to move so we could give you guys a true, uh, true layout here of what happened. Okay, so 225 test went over earlier. Uh, you know, average about 230. This test right here we just pulled off, we were averaging around 260, 265. Um, at one point we got up to, to 280. I mean, we wanted to be at 280, um, but you know, at one point we were down at 250 when we closed the door back. So, but that's barbecue and you know, it's, it's you're never gonna keep the same exact temperature the entire time. Uh, but here's the result. So basically firebox would be right here, okay? These two are on the water pan shelf. There is no water pan again, no water pan in here, but on the water pan shelf, okay? This is directly next to the firebox, okay? Right here is our grate. Oh, I don't want to mark that off, okay? Right here is our grate. So this is as close as you can get to the firebox and cook, okay? Obviously, here's your smoke. This is pretending this is the stack, okay? This is the bottom grate. This right here is the top grate. Okay, again, this right here is right next to the firebox on top grate. This is next to the smokestack on, on the, the top grate. So, realistically, if these were briskets, each one of these rolls could very easily represent a brisket, the way they were spaced, okay? And, and, and same down here. Um, I don't see why on any of these, and I'll, I mean, I'll flip over the, like what I would think would be the worst ones, okay? Um, and obviously, these, these cook side to side pretty equally, okay? Um, but at 275, 260, 265, 275, like I said, I was trying to keep it there. Um, you know, I don't see why you couldn't cook and not have to rotate. And, and that is something I, I do want to talk about. We've had multiple customers call with the volunteer and be like, hey guys, you know, after everybody got released, he's like, you know, we don't rotate our meat and we cook on the complete bottom tray or the, the bottom grate, which is what we experienced during our cooks too, back when we were originally testing it. Um, so, you know, this is in no way, shape or form, a knock on Mad Scientist. Um, he is a great guy, uh, very intelligent, outside of barbecue, knows barbecue well. Um, the, obviously he cooked at a higher temperature and we understand that. To me, to us, to TMG, and I really probably any of those poker builders, like probably should have been cooked at 275 or 225, somewhere in that range. That's where people cook barbecue. I think that's a more fair range to cook at if you're gonna do this. But hey, hindsight's 2020 on everybody. Um, you know, the only other thing I, I would say is this. So if we had put a water pan on our bottom shelf, it takes out these two and it takes out these two. Very good chance these right here don't get hit at that point, okay? It's gonna block some of that heat. At that point, it's like the entire, just with a small water pan, the entire grate is almost dead equal. I mean, it, it would be hard to argue outside of that. Top grate also, I meant to show you guys this, um, very equal here. I mean, obviously it's, it's a little hotter here. I mean, that's, but again, I, I don't think you burn a brisket. And I, it's not that I don't think, I know because we've cooked on it um, and we've cooked brisket on it loaded this thing down. I mean, at one point, so we had three racks in it just to see what it would do. Um, never had an issue there. We will probably end up building one for ourselves again. The problem we, every time we build one is a customer needs it ASAP and we try to get it to them because our customers do come first. Um, but maybe we have to build one of each model and put it in the shop and, and we cook on it and we put test. I, the, bis, the, the This Texas biscuit test here, not the biggest fan of. Uh, just because, like I said, I would rather cook meat and, and, and barbecue, and maybe we figure out a way to to do that with briskets. And it's just it's hard to, to judge there. This is a pretty decent way to judge of what's going to be hot on your grill. Um, but but back to what happened, we did get an influx of calls and concerns, and um, it was kind of a negative spotlight on our company that I don't think was necessarily fair. Um, and Jeremy did a good job of, hey, these are all great pits, and they are. The Franklin's a great pit. The uh, Goldie's pit, great pit. Um, you know, Eminem builds that. Those guys build some great pits. Um, no issue with that whatsoever. Uh, but it just kind of put a negative spotlight because people felt like we had cooked the results 
and our previous biscuit test. And this whole biscuit test we did, now the, now the video you're watching right now is, is gonna be an edited, slimmed down version. But we did this in entirety on YouTube Live. Um, the reason for that was so that way someone says, oh, you're lying, you, you didn't do that. Like, I wanna take the doubt out. Um, you know, Jeremy has a, has a, has a good reach, a, a very broad reach. And, um, so I think that's why we got a lot of calls and, uh, it, it was a little unfortunate. I would have loved to seen all of them tested with, with water pans or none of them tested with water pans. And the reason for that is the volunteer on day one had a water pan, not even, not even the one he had, the very first one we built had a water pan shelf in it. We tell our people. Hey, it's up to you. If you want to use it, use it. If you don't, don't. It's whatever you want to, how you want to cook. So I think if you're going to try to dial one in, we probably should dial them all in. Yes, there's probably some mis miscommunication on my end when I said, hey, leave the stack dammer open and manage by the firebox. What I was trying to say is learn the pit from the firebox in first and then fine tune it with your stack dampener. So for this right here, for this test, I had to put my money where my mouth was and I left the stack dampener open. I probably could have dialed it in just a little bit more. Um, but because I did tell Jeremy, hey, do it that way. And the reason why is I do feel like when you truly learn a pit, if you learn it from the firebox in first, then you can really nail it. Um, but as Jeremy said, hey, all three of those pits that are there going to cook some great barbecue. This is kind of a representation like, hey, very, very little of that great hot. And it's even debatable at 275 and 225, 230, is it really even hot? I don't think you burn, I know you don't burn any meat there. Um, so just want to put that out there because I know I've had some customers with concerns. Um, we'll be, oh, so fire management. Let's do it. So, so we'll take a break right here in a second. I'm going to reset this up and let's come back on how we manage the fire. Let's do that. Okay, so a little bit about the fire management. I kind of left that out earlier. So let's talk about that real quick and then we'll, we'll wrap this video up. So I made a mistake to begin with um, on, on today. Our TMG torch here, filled full of, of charcoal. Um, got it going, threw it in, and then I'll get it out of the way so we can see clearly. Um, basically put two runner logs next to the charcoal. Two splits like that. The reason for that is for the last three or four months, I've had a lot of cooking time uh, on our tank smoker. So our 250 or 330 or 500 or 1000 gallon pits. And you do have to build a little bit bigger fire um, to get those smokers up to temperature. Same with kind of the reverse flow. You build a little bit bigger fire than what you would in a, in a small uh, traditional offset. So got the fire going, uh, turned around, got talking. A minute later, looked back and we were at 450 degrees. So initially, just for saving time and shooting videos, um, you know, we opened the the, the um, door up here and let some heat out, close the fire down. Now, once we got it back down to, to manageable temps, 220 to, or 225 to, to 250, um, basically from there, if it was hot on the, when I say hot, I'm 15, 20 degrees difference from, from gauge to gauge, there was two ways to control this fire and we did it multiple different times just, just for playing with it. Um, one way, and let's say these are our two runner logs in there, I left them same, you know, parallel with the, with the smoker just to see if, how it would run. Um, you know, if it's, if it's hot on the uh, smokestack side, it's drawn a little too fast. So what you can do is you can close these logs up and all of a sudden it kind of cuts that draft down, okay? And when it does that, you can see it equal back out. Or if it's hot on the firebox side, you can widen these out, let a little bit more air come across, and again, then it'll equal it out. Um, the other thing too is on this smoker, we had it in the first and second notch. Okay, um, that's gonna be one of the tests that's probably different from, from Jeremy. I think he runs that firebox door open and lets a lot of air through there. So in order to main a higher t maintain a higher temp, you have to put a lot more wood and probably has a little bit bigger fire allowing Potentially, I don't know this for sure, but just seeing some of the videos, maybe some of the flame got into the smoke chamber. I'm not sure on that, but just seeing kind of what was going down, that, that is a possibility of why he may have a little bit different results than what we have. Um, you know, and that's part of it. Uh, you know, he is a content creator. And for those who don't know, they think, oh man, these guys doing YouTube all the time, got it made. I mean, that's a lot of work. Um, from the time you shoot the video, you edit the video, you put it up, you answer emails, you, you do everything in the day. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if that dude works 60, 70, 80 hours a week. Um, he's a busy guy. So like I said, again, no whatsoever 
This is not a knock on him. We just wanted to recreate this and see if we would get the same results. Um, you know, like I said, again, the only thing I'd have done differently is probably the water pan deal. But outside of that, that's kind of how this thing ran. We are able to run it all day. It's, it's been fun. We've probably been out here five or six hours running it, um, just playing with it. I'm glad we got the time in today because I haven't practiced on a volunteer in a while. Um, but that's what I would suggest on fire management. The charcoal chimney, I would do about half of what I did. So half charcoal chimney full of, of, of coal, probably two splits in there, not the four that I did. And that should bring you up the temperature pretty quick. Um, and then from there, kind of learn what the pit wants. So, you know, these are the average size splits that I like. Um, they're not tiny. I tell everyone, if you take a Coke can, this is a little bit smaller than a Coke can, but like, you know, one, possibly two Coke cans wide, just easy to, to see that. Um, and then two tall, these are a little bit bigger than that. So, you know, maybe two inches shorter, but I really like these size splits today. Um, they're not tiny, they're not cut in half. Um, obviously, if you throw a real big split in there, you may build a big fire. Uh, may hurt you a little bit. Um, then two small splits, you're gonna be constantly adding them. So this is what I like to run. Everyone's a little different. Um, and again, you guys are the pit masters, so you can kind of decide. But um, that's kind of probably a wrap for today. So thanks for watching.